welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Kiri and I'm a first year flower farmer here in Western Washington in Zone 8A. Today it's December 31st, Happy New Year by the time you watch this, and it's 33 degrees out and I'm going to start some seeds today. So just a couple updates from the last video I posted, which is the greenhouse assembly video. So there were two cliffhangers I guess from that. First, I tried an experiment with the heat lamp to see if it would keep it warmer in here and that didn't work. <laughs> So I've been monitoring the temperature in the greenhouse and outside the greenhouse for the last week and I've checked it with the heat lamp on with the heat lamp off. It looks like no matter what the temperature in the greenhouse is about 5 to 10 degrees warmer than the outside air temperature. Last week we dipped down to 16 degrees so it was about I think like 22 degrees in here so that is not ideal for starting seeds. The other update from the greenhouse video is that we still haven't finished building all of the shelves for in here because it's still frozen outside. So my husband was so nice and he built me a couple in here so that I can use them to get my seeds started, um, but more will be coming. Today I'm starting cool flowers that need to be transplanted and this is based on Lisa Mason Ziegler's cool flowers book and something I learned from that recently is that every flower that is mentioned in that book is winter hardy to my zone. What that means is that I can fall sow those six to eight weeks before my first frost date. And unfortunately I missed that date this year because I started my business in November and my first frost is sometime in October so I totally missed that opportunity but that's okay because these are all winter hardy in my zone so that means that I can sow them really anytime in winter plant them out and they will be just fine and actually by getting my seeds started now in early January well almost January and then letting them grow inside for a bit that actually hits the early spring time as Lisa says I think it's gonna be perfect <laughs> All right, let me give you a quick rundown of all the materials that I have today to get my seeds started. So the first is this seed starting mix. I got this at my local hardware store and you know, I just feel like this is something you don't need to spend a whole bunch of money on. So, you know, I just got this cheap bag. I've also got some vermiculite that I'll sprinkle over the top. Got 72 cell plug trays, biodegradable seedling trays, and a couple little pots. My spray bottle. And I also have a bucket that I'm going to pre-moisten my seed starting mix in. And the most important part are my seeds. These have been in the fridge for about a week. Alright, put the hair up because we're getting down to business. <laughs> And then I also just got some water and then my seeds I've been soaking. All right, first I'm gonna get started moistening my seed starting mix. All right, that looks like a pretty good texture. By the way, these are brand new seed starting trays, so I did not sterilize them because they should already be clean. But if you're using old ones, of course you want to sterilize them. The heat lamp may not have warmed it up that much in here, but it's definitely nice to warm up my hands. Don't tell anyone, but sometimes I put potting soil in the bottom of bigger pots and seed starting trays that I am starting seeds in because it's way cheaper than seed starting mix. And honestly, it doesn't really make a difference. Well, that much of a difference. It does, but see, I'm, I'm topping it off with the seed starting mix. All right, let's start with the sweet peas. So I soaked these for about 24 hours, um, and I'm just gonna put them in the biodegradable pots because I don't have their root trainers, which are like the really deep seed starting trays. Sweet peas really don't like their roots to be disturbed, so by starting them in these biodegradable seed trays, hopefully I can just cut these up and plant them out and they'll be happy with that. And I'm just gonna do two per cell. I only soaked enough for one per cell. Whoopsie. Yeah, these seed coats are definitely soft. Personally, I don't really love these biodegradable trays just because they tend to suck all the moisture out of the soil and it's just really high maintenance. I'm also going to start some Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus today. Even though that's a heat loving tender perennial in my zone, I'm getting it started now because the time to maturity is kind of long. It takes 115 to 130 days to be able to harvest that. And I'm just starting a couple seeds in each of these small 
three inch pots. I don't need a whole bunch of these and I'm gonna plant these out in my landscape. I'm gonna sow three seeds per cell, well per pot I guess. <laughs> and then if they all germinate that's great and I'll just divide them later and then plant them out. So I based the amount of seeds that I'm starting today on my farm layout that I had planned out. So I've got 10 different types of seeds here that I'm going to start. All right, let's start with some Dara. Oh, these are small seeds. I'm gonna just start about 72 or so of these. And I'm gonna do two per cell. All right, let me label it before I get all lost in here. Whoa. So figuring out the right depth is important. So for little seeds, oops, and I'm dropping all over the place. So for little seeds like Dara or snap dragons, honestly, you don't have to even really push them in that far. Just make sure they have good soil contact and then move along. But I think that the rule of thumb is usually you wanna plant the seed twice the depth that the seed is tall. All right, next up is calendula, also known as pot marigold. I'm going to start about 50 of those seeds, and I'm going to do two seeds per cell, and just push them in about a quarter inch. These look like little goyas, which are called bitter melon, but uh, they're disgusting. <laughs> These are so funny. They look, this is so funny. I'm also going to start some blue glitter Eryngium that will perennialize here and I'll plant that out in my landscape, but I'm just going to start about 25 of those. So these we don't want to cover because light aids germination, so I'll just put them in and then do a light sprinkling of vermiculite over them. Alright, I'm also going to start 100 seeds of Summer Pastels Yarrow. Those are teeny tiny seeds and they do not want to be covered, so I'm also going to just lightly sew those in and then cover them with vermiculite. Next up is Cyanoglossum, also known as Chinese forget-me-not. I got the mystery rose variety, which is pink. I'm going to sew about 50 of those. They need to be lightly covered and they need darkness to germinate. All right, I took a little break to warm up and get some tea and also to charge my camera battery. So the last couple things that we have to sew today is the feverfew, scabiosis drop flower, rudbeckia, and the costa snap. So let's get into that. All right, I'm gonna sew about 25 seeds of fever few. I only have a packet of this which has 50 seeds and I'm going to succession sew another batch later. So these must be tiny because they're in this little wax paper thing. Light aids germination on these so we don't want to cover them. Oh yeah, teeny tiny little baby seeds. All right, if I can manage two per cell, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, done. <laughs> Better start putting it in the wrong spot. Isn't it just amazing though how so much wonderful stuff can come out of such a tiny little seed? It's pretty cool. Whoops, I almost forgot to put my fever few back where it belongs. Whoopsie! Whoopsie whoops. <laughs> Closed up the packet, but where's the seed? Also, this fever few is a tender perennial in my zone. So I may actually plant this in the landscape, we'll just have to see. All right, next up is some scabiosa. So I have this Black Knight scabiosa seed left over from last year when I was just planting flowers for fun. And then I also got the Pincushion Formula Mix from Johnny's. I'm gonna start about 50 seeds now and then I'll do another succession sowing later. I did plant these Black Knight scabiosa last year and I think I started them too late to be honest. So. I'm really excited to see how starting them this early will help because I think I only got like one bloom from them last year. Alright, up next is my straw flower and this is also a seed that I got last year when I was just growing flowers for fun. And it's funny because it says that these are dwarf and they were like 8 feet tall. So... <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how they do this year. They were really prolific though. Like they just would constantly be blooming and they do attract wasps. So I had planted them by our deck where we like to like eat dinner in the summertime. And so that was a little bit unpleasant, um, but I know the wasps are good. So I'll succession so again later. 
but I just kind of run out of space and this is not top priority flower. Yeah, these we don't want to cover these, we just want to lightly pack them in. Alright, next up is Rudbeckia. So I got the Cherokee Sunset Mix and these are not perennial in my zone apparently, which I find interesting because the Rudbeckia and my wildflower mix are perennial, but it must just be the variety. So these I'm going to plant up about 50 of these. These need light to germinate, so I'm just really just going to probably just push them into the soil. I do believe that these are pretty florific, so I don't know if I'm going to secession sow these. Whoops, whoa, got way too many in that. <laughs> way too many in that one. Whoopsies! Alright, last but certainly not least, snapdragon. So I'm going to dedicate a whole cell to snapdragons. I love snapdragons and they are so awesome. You can just sell them as a bunch if you want to and you can just use them pretty much with every type of flower. They're like the perfect spike. So I'm going to get started with my first succession of Costa snapdragons and then my next succession that I'll probably do in a month or two will be the Potomac mix. So snapdragons need light to germinate. So we'll just want to surface sow these and then we can cover with vermiculite too. And these are like little tiny, tiny pieces of dust is what they look like. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get two per cell, but it's, it's kind of hard with these. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Way too many in that one. Sometimes I forget which ones I put seeds in. Now that I'm done sowing all of the seeds, I'm just going to do a light dusting of vermiculite on pretty much all of this. You get vermiculite, and you get vermiculite. Everybody gets vermiculite. Oops, it says wear gloves. <laughs> Too late. And of course my sleeve won't stay up, so I've got to like keep rubbing it on myself. <laughs> Honestly, like what even is vermiculite? Okay, yeah, soil amendment that enhances seed germination. But like, what is it? Somewhere there's a description. Oh, I have to go online to figure out what the contents are. Maybe I'll do that later. But it says it's organic, so it's not supposed to hurt me, right? Oh, whoopsie. My bad. Sorry, Dara. All right, top it off not wearing gloves and drinking some tea that probably has a bunch of dust in it. Mmm. Hello, and welcome to my foyer. We actually don't really use our front door that much, and visitors usually come around the back anyways. So this is really the only spot in our 900 square foot house that I can put this. And I did it last year and it worked out just fine. So I did put down some cardboard just to make sure there's no mess that gets on the floor. So right here I have a small heat mat that I'm using for the Mahogany Splendor and for my Eucalyptus. And I know I didn't show you this in this video. But that's because I started this eucalyptus November 30th. I'm pretty excited. This is the lemon bush eucalyptus that smells like citronella, and I'll tell you, yeah, it does. <laughs> um, so I got I got like okay germination on this because I didn't have any vermiculite at the time that I went to sow these. So I just put them right in here, and I honestly didn't even have any seed starting mix. So this is potting soil with no, no vermiculite, nothing. And I got 9 out of 16 seeds to germinate, so that's pretty cool. They were very sporadic, and as soon as I put them on the heat mat, they just started taking off. You may notice that one shelf is brighter than the other, and that's because this light bulb burnt out, unfortunately. But I do have another one coming in the mail. I think it's supposed to arrive this next week. So the Cytoglossum likes it darker to germinate, so we'll just keep them on that side for now. About this system, this is from Gardener Supply. It is the two-tier stack and grow system with LED lights, and I really like it. It's super cool because you can adjust the height of the lights and you can get them really close. And actually, I'm gonna do that in a second because these need to be closer. As you can see, I can fit four 72 cell plug trays on each plus some extra. 
So, you know, it's pretty good, especially if you're just a home gardener and you just want to start vegetables or flowers for yourself. And like I said, these are going to hang out in here until they germinate and they get a couple sets of true leaves or something like that. And then I'll probably move them out to the greenhouse and to harden them off. I did just give them a misting to make sure that they're nice and moist and watered in. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I'll keep you updated on how these do and the process of hardening them off and transplanting them out. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. Thanks. See you next time.